a lot of suffering still out there. So the need for consciousness in business and leadership is greater than ever. We have movement and momentum in that direction, but of course, we want to see much faster evolution because, you know, we're running out of time. We have to stay true to our beliefs and our vision that we have to move forward in this direction for us to survive and thrive on this planet and for other life to also thrive. Humanizing the conscious side of your organization. Yes, yeah, so I would say that <clears throat> the world of business has been changing over the last uh, 15 years that we started our movement 2008. Uh, that there is a greater awareness of these ideas that are at the root of conscious capitalism. The idea of higher purpose, for example. 15 years ago, hardly anybody talked about it. Now it's almost a common uh, language that people use. The stakeholder mindset, again, it was very unusual to hear about that, but today a lot of people talk about stakeholder capitalism, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, the importance of conscious leadership, again, becoming quite common, and the recognition that culture is a vital uh, component of what it means to have a viable business. So all of those elements are becoming more important. People are recognizing them, and companies are paying attention, and they're investing time and energy and resources into those. Putting it all together is what makes a conscious business. And I would say that that has been growing in the last 15 years. We've seen a lot more adoption of these ideas. We have chapters in uh, about 15, 20 countries and about 35 US cities. So there's a vibrant community of, of practice out there and people are using the language, etc. So I would say overall, the uh, uh, direction of change is, is positive. Now, does that mean we're all the way there? No, I would say we're still in the early stages of this transition. Uh, that majority of companies, especially public companies and smaller companies, are still operating with the old mindset. But it is starting to change. And I think also what's important is that the stakeholders are starting to change. So human beings are becoming more conscious. So as an employee, people are looking for something more. Right? We talked about the great resignation that happened during the pandemic, after the pandemic. Employees are looking for meaning and purpose in their life, in their work. Customers are also looking for products that are not causing as much harm to the environment as, as previously they were accepting those and tolerating that, but fewer of them are doing that now. Investors are increasingly looking to invest in companies that actually have not only the promise of a good return, but also a positive impact and leaving a, a, uh, a positive legacy in the world. So I would say that all of these are positive trends. Mm -hmm. So, but still a long way to go. You know, we, we have a, you know, the, the problems are even getting more intense. The recognition of income inequality, for example, as a big problem around the world. All of the populist uh, movements and populist leaders getting elected is because of the real pain that so many people are feeling, even in a rich country like the US where 50% of people have less than $400 in the bank and they cannot survive even a small emergency situation, right? So again, there's a lot of suffering still out there. So the need for consciousness in business and leadership is greater than ever. We have movement and momentum in that direction, but of course, we want to see much faster evolution because, you know, we're running out of time. This is the decade in which major shifts need to happen. And so I think there's a sense of urgency about it, but there's also hope that people are getting the message and that the old paradigm is slowly dying, even though some people are trying to hold on to it. You know, there's a lot of backlash, especially in the US. People are saying, oh, this is all woke capitalism. You know, we need to go back to just making money. And that's, that's a uh, really, really myopic and backward looking mindset, you know, and we cannot go back there. We have to stay true to our beliefs and our vision that we have to move forward in this direction for us to survive and thrive on this planet and for other life to also thrive. Yeah, so I do think the sense of urgency is becoming quite evident. And people are seeing now that climate change we talked about as a theoretical idea is really happening, right? And the consequences are already being felt. Income inequality, again, we've talked about for a long time. We are starting to see, as I said, revolutionary kind of energies in many countries, right? Chile, for example, going from extreme right now 
to a very much of a left government all over South America that has happened many other parts of the world. So these problems are becoming quite evident to any reasonable person who's looking at the world saying, wow, business as usual is not an option. So the sense of urgency, what we call a burning platform, right, that there has to be change and change has to come quickly is being recognized. And so more and more leaders and boards of directors and others are starting to get that sense of urgency. They're getting the message. And so I do think that change will come and change is happening already, but I think the pace of change will accelerate, you know. Uh, what happens with major societal shifts is that there is kind of a um, tipping point that is reached. And very often you don't even realize the tipping point is near. Like before the Berlin Wall came down in 1989, nobody predicted even one week before, certainly not 10 years before. But the, all the pressure was building underneath the system. And then suddenly, you know, you start to see major uh, changes happen in the external world. So I think those pressures have all been building for a very long time. You see the commitments that countries are making now towards uh, climate change, towards shifting towards renewable energy, etc. I mean, you're starting to see an accelerating pace of change and a sense of urgency. So I do believe that we human beings, as you said, you know, we tend to wait until there's a crisis and we're right on the edge of disaster before we jump and make sure that we avoid that. And I, I do think that's happening this time as well. I do think that we will mobilize and make the changes uh, that we need to in order to prevent the most extreme version of what could happen. You know, some of it is already too late. You know, some of the global warming, etc. we have already crossed those milestones. But some of the other more serious ones, I think we have the real potential to be able to avoid those because we have the technologies, we have the solutions, we even have the capital. It just takes now the will of political leaders and business leaders to deploy the solutions that are already out there. So I think the key thing that has to happen is really uh, for leaders to wake up and step up to this great uh, challenge that we are facing. Right? They are being called upon to undertake heroic action in a way. Right? So I think the importance of leadership is always great, but especially in today's world, we are being called to have a different kind of leader, a leader who's a visionary, who, a leader who has the moral courage to do the right thing and maybe sacrifice even their own future if they have to because the stakes are so high. Right? So I think the call for conscious leadership is greater today than ever before in the world, in the political realm, as well as in the business realm. And I do expect and hope and believe that those kinds of leaders are out there and that they will step up to this challenge. Humanizing the conscious side of your organization.